Thank you very much. Uh, my topic today is to present you recommendations for surveillance of uh, patients with adenomas. So, in fact, uh, to be precise, what about monitoring recommendation, um, recommendations for monitoring patients already who earlier underwent endoscopic polypectomy? It sounds simple, and uh, I think there is a lot of knowledge about it, especially among endoscopists, gastroenterologists, but probably not that much about uh, medical oncologists. The rationale for surveillance of such patients are clear. Majority of colorectal cancers arise from adenomas. This is uh, obvious. Endoscopic removal of such adenomas decreases the incidence and mortality of colorectal cancer. Um, after this removal, however, within the next three to five years, uh, nearly half of the people who already uh, have uh, their the polyps removed will have metachronous neoplastic lesions, so quite a lot. And because of this fear, 25% uh, of all colonoscopies worldwide are performed for surveillance, so repeating examination again and again for checking whether the new metachronous neoplastic lesion after removal of polyp is uh, occurring or not. The reasons for occurrence, however, of metachronous lesions are, are different. Two main types of these reasons. First, people who had adenomas removed are probably at higher risk of developing other adenomas and cancer. And this sounds obvious. However, this is not true for all adenomas, most probably only for those with a high-risk adenomas and not for a tiny, small polyps. The other reason for occurrence of new adenomas after removal is that probably some of them are just missed polyps or incompletely removed uh, adenomas in the uh, initial examination. And this occurs when the quality of um, colonoscopy was not perfect. And this is the main problem in current gastroenterology, to improve the quality of colonoscopy. These incompletely removed adenomas are a big problem because we know that at least 25% of cancers arising within three years after polypectomy are in the same site of previous polypectomy that was thought to be complete and it was not the case. So the quality of removal of adenomas is also a problem. So that's why we are feared. We want to repeat examinations and we want to know the uh, recommendations for surveillance. Also, uh, I can repeat the word however, the adherence for guidelines is very, very poor. These are the examples of inappropriate recommendations and they occur uh, within the Western world. 50% of gastroenterologists recommend three-year follow-up in patients with a single small adenoma removed, and this is not necessary. Such patients with a single small adenoma, according to nearly all guidelines, should have a controlled colonoscopy within five to 10 years or never. 25% recommend colonoscopy after removal of the hyperplastic polyp, and this is not necessary at all. All recommendations say people who had hyperplastic polyps don't need any surveillance. And also we tend, because of fear of uh, making a mistake and because of uh, fear of lawyers probably, uh, we recommend too short, shorter intervals than recommended. And uh, this, this is a problem that raises the number of unnecessary colonoscopies. I want to remind you that generally the aim of surveillance, so controlling the patient after the removing of polyp, is to avoid death of cancer, to avoid cancer, to avoid advanced adenoma, which is defined as the large polyp, villous components, and high-grade dysplasia classically, but not just to pick all small polyps, tiny, which probably have no clinical relevance. So we always should remember what is our uh, aim. This is probably the most important slide I want to show you. Before starting surveillance, you need to be sure that the initial index colonoscopy is of the highest possible quality. So, the, what, what is the high quality colonoscopy? This must be performed by the colonoscopist with the highest acceptable adenoma detection rate. This is the quality parameter that was validated and it reflects 
that uh, if the endoscopist has high adenoma detection rate, their patients do not have so-called interval cancers. The second point is that each colonoscopy should have a very good bowel preparation, so clinicians, endoscopists should provide information whether the colonoscopy bowel preparation was correct. And the clinicians like you should always check the colonoscopy report if the bowel preparation quality is mentioned in the report. Many reports do not have this information and it, this should be improved. The usual uh, information that the bowel preparation is reported is the Boston Bowel Preparation Scale, where you clearly know whether the colon was adequately cleaned or not. Then, you need to check whether your endoscopist reached the secum. If it was not reached, if the whole colon was not examined, you should not start surveillance because it's too early. You should reach the secum, you should evaluate the whole colon, and then to start surveillance. Next point that should be checked. All polyps must be removed completely. There is always so, quite often, missing information whether the polyps that were removed were completely, in the opinion of endoscopists and histopathologists, were removed uh, in total. If this information is not provided in the report, it means the endoscopist maybe is not aware of the quality um, requirements that are obvious for all high quality endoscopists. And the last point, you need to check whether the histopathology of all polyps are known. If some polyps were lost, if some polyps were put in the same container, like five polyps in the same container, you are never sure if all the polyps were examined. So the quality of the initial colonoscopy is of utmost importance. We need to have such colon like here. This is the perfect bowel preparation. Then we can see the polyps like here, even the flat in the right lower corner. So, Anyway, we need to do uh, surveillance and follow-up colonoscopies, but we need to know in whom and how frequently. There are many studies assessing risk factors to determine intervals between the initial colonoscopy and the follow-up colonoscopy. This is one of those, uh, the study from gastroenterology. They looked at different factors, including clinical, uh, and it turned out that in general, patient characteristics like age, gender and family history do not play any role in surveillance recommendations. They are important, but they are not used for surveillance recommendations. However, the polyp factors are important. This is the number of adenomas. The more the adenomas, the risk of uh, advanced uh, neoplasia or cancer are higher. Size of adenomas plays a role. Histology, which is especially uh, the presence of villus component, high-grade dysplasia plays a role, and location in the proximal colon. So having this information, the different recommendations are available. Depending where you live, you should use your recommendations. There are plenty of recommendations, unfortunately. There is no one global recommendation for the surveillance. So if you live in the United States, you should follow the guidelines published in 2012 where uh, people who had no polyps with hyperplastic polyps and with poly one or two small adenomas slower than, uh, smaller than 10 millimeters are uh, defined as low risk and they should have a follow-up in the nearest follow-up at 10 years or in case of this one to small tubular adenomas five to 10 years. Americans, by the way, tend to use the five-year because of this fear that we mentioned. On the other hand, the high risk in the American guidelines, you should have a colonoscopy repeated within three years, and these are three or more adenomas, larger adenomas, those with villous contaminants, those with high-grade dysplasia, and those with more than 10 adenomas should have a uh, follow-up less than three, uh, three years uh, follow-up. There are EU guidelines, they are much more complicated. They uh, define three risks. Low risk, again, one, two adenomas that are small and there are tubular. This is again. And in the EU guidelines, they are very uh, similar to um, British guidelines, UK guidelines as well. 
these low-risk patients don't need any surveillance or returning to just the routine screening that is existing in a given country. So no need to worry, this is low risk, providing one two adenomas, both small and both are tubular with low-grade dysplasia. The intermediate risk defined in the European guidelines are three to four adenomas, so again the number, at least the size, at least one uh, more than between one and two centimeters, this is the OR, or villous or high-grade dysplasia, this is likely uh, American uh, high risk, and it is three years. And also the highest risk, when there is more than five adenomas, at least one more than two centimeters within uh, uh, one year, the clearing colonoscopy. The European guidelines are also complicated because they show what, what's next. In those from mid-intermediate and high risk, you see the findings or repeat where should be the third examination time. I don't want to go into details because it's a little bit too complicated. We have another guidelines, European ones. These are the European Society of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy, which sounds uh, simpler, but it's similar. It has two groups, high risk group, and if not, if there is someone that is not in high risk, he should have no, no follow-up, no surveillance, or returning to screening, or having a, a colonoscopy within 10 years. If there is a high-risk uh, group, I will show you in the next slide how this group is defined. Three-year surveillance, if there is high risk in the surveillance, again, the second returns every three years. If there is no uh, high-risk adenomas in the next examination, five-year surveillance. There is an important starting point that I mentioned to you before, high quality index initial colonoscopy. This is a very important point from which you can only start surveillance. This high risk group is defined in European guidelines by ESGE as large adenomas, high grade dysplasia, villous component, more than three adenomas, and serrated adenoma. This is another new feature, more than 10 millimeter or with dysplasia. Anyone, if a single of those factors are present, this is the high risk group requiring the repetition of colonoscopy within three years. But there are many more guidelines, unfortunately. There are no global uh, ones, and you, as you can see, the low risk patients, the high risk patients, and serrated poly patients are different recommendations for low risk patients from routine screening from five to 10 years in American guidelines or no surveillance and ESG guidelines. So as you can see, there is a complexity and uh, probably you should choose one of the guidelines, remember them well, and use them in clinical practice. But it's not possible to use all the guidelines at the same time, of course. There are studies comparing, for example, American guidelines, uh, the, the groups, risk groups defined by American guidelines, and checking whether UK guidelines are different. As you can see, comparing the same groups, US guidelines for a low risk, say five to 10 years, UK guidelines, or EU guidelines say no surveillance or five years. And it's the same in other groups. There are differences, differences. Here is a homogeneous, the same guideline. But for example, the highest risk in US, less than three years, in UK, one year. So as you can see, it's complex. But I urge you to choose one of those guidelines and consistently use them in clinical practice. There are differences. There are additional issues that you should remember from practical point of view that are present in all the guidelines. Do not start surveillance before you check the quality of the initial examination. So, again, you need to check the bowel preparation must be perfect, examination must be complete, polyps must be removed completely. Question about stopping surveillance, it is not decided in any of the guidelines. Probably, usually, you don't need to repeat examinations until long life. Usually, stopping age is 75, but it may be modified depending on the comorbidities and or the patients with earlier or later. And of course, all the guidelines mention that if during the surveillance period, let's say regarded at 10 years or five years, symptoms occur, patients should inform that the doctor and come for earlier colonoscopy. So the guidelines on surveillance are not that strict to forget to allow symptoms to occur. The guidelines concerning 
cancer in the adenoma also similar in the same uh, in all guidelines. So if the um, early cancer in adenoma is present and it's completely removed, the margin is larger than one millimeter, the, uh, there is a good or moderate differentiation and no lymphovascular invasion, these patients should be surveyed as, as the high risk group. Now, uh, as you have seen, the guidelines are numerous and are different. The problem why these guidelines are so numerous and different is that they are based on expert opinions. In the history of endoscopy, there was only one high quality randomized controlled trial and uh, with the endpoint of advanced adenomas. The people after polypectomy were randomized to have a follow-up at one year or at three years. And the second group had colonoscopy only at three years. But the results were the same. The risk of 3% of advanced adenomas at three years. So the conclusion from this study, there is no need to do one year colonoscopy. It's enough. It's better to do only one examination here. And I want to show you how old was this study. This study was performed in 1993. And so far, this is the only randomized control study comparing different surveillance guidelines. And that's why we have so many expert opinions guidelines. This is the main problem now. The problem will be solved because two studies started now. One is the European Polyp Surveillance Trial called EPOS, started in 2015. Spain is the main contributor of this trial, but this is the pan-European study, including Norway, Netherlands, Poland, Denmark, Sweden, Portugal, and Austria, and many other countries are welcome to join. And this uh, study um, is, uh, has three groups, EPOS-1, low-risk adenomas, and there will be a randomization into group five-year surveillance and 10 years versus 10 year only. High-risk group, three year, five year, 10 years, versus five years and 10 years. And there is a EPOS three group serrated polyps, five years and 10 years without a randomization. Results will be known in about uh, 10 to 15 years. So we wait for, for the basis for better recommendations. And the tendency is probably to prolong the surveillance intervals. Uh, in the United States, there is going to be another study, but only for low-risk adenomas. Those who probably don't need any, re any re uh, surveillance, they will randomize people to have colonoscopy five years and 10 years versus 10 years. And uh, they will look at the endpoint collector cancer incidence. They, they will start in 2018, so we will wait another 10 years for uh, the results. However, we will have these results. And the guidelines will improve by that time. So in summary, we have multiple guidelines on surveillance after polypectomy. There is a lack of high quality randomized control trials with the colorectal cancer incidence or mortality as the endpoint. Basis for guidelines are weak. These are the expert opinions. Surveillance uses too much resources and frequently the clinical practice shows that surveillance examinations are too frequent. And one point that I want to mention, everybody, including endoscopists and clinicians, including medical oncologists, should check whether the initial colonoscopy was of high quality, and the high quality was defined. So what to do in the current practice? Again, uh, choose the one guideline in your respective country, follow it, always mention in which guidelines you are using, because in Europe there are at least two guidelines. Avoid shortening intervals, assess quality of index colonoscopy. Guidance will change in the future. Thank you very much for your attention.